In the glittering world of Hollywood, where stars often rise from humble origins to iconic statuses, Clint Eastwood's journey is both inspiring and tumultuous. This legendary actor and director ascended from modest beginnings to dominate the film industry. Yet, behind his steely gaze and commanding presence, Eastwood navigated a path fraught with personal trials. From a childhood punctuated by frequent moves to the psychological strains of his early acting days, his resilience was tested time and time again. He endured harrowing experiences such as a near-fatal plane crash and the profound grief of losing his father. Despite these formidable challenges, Eastwood sculpted a career that not only withstood the pressures of Hollywood, but also profoundly shaped its landscape. I'm not just the actor in the film, I'm part of the production too, so go ahead, make my day. I sometimes think when I was a little kid and I used to hang out with my grandfather who was in his 90s, and I thought, uh, see, this, the hell do want to live this long? Clint Eastwood entered the world on May 31st, 1930 at St. Francis Hospital in San Francisco, tipping the scales at 11 pounds, which led to his early nickname, Samson. His parents, Clint Sr. and Ruth Runner Eastwood, hailed from a diverse heritage of English, Scottish, Dutch, German, and Irish ancestors, one of whom was a passenger on the Mayflower. The family later expanded with the arrival of his younger sister, Jean Bernhard. This blend of rich cultural backgrounds influenced Eastwood's unique perspective and artistic vision in his later works. Growing up, his robust physical presence and diverse ancestry shaped not only his roles on screen, but also his interactions and relationships off screen. During the 1930s, Clint's father struggled to find stable employment, working various jobs from a salesman to a detective in San Francisco. This period was marked by constant moving for the Eastwood family, but by 1940, they had settled in affluent Piedmont, California. Despite the hardships of the Depression era, the Eastwoods lived comfortably, enjoying amenities like a swimming pool and a country club membership. However, school was a challenge for Clint. He was held back in Piedmont Junior High due to poor grades and had to attend summer classes. Clint's defiance became more pronounced during his time at Piedmont High School. He was involved in several pranks including writing an inappropriate message on the school scoreboard and setting a fire on the school lawn which led to his expulsion. He transferred to Oakland Technical High School where teachers noticed his potential in drama and encouraged him to participate in school plays though he showed little interest. Instead, Clint was drawn to fast cars, girls, and hobbies like tennis and golf. While he showed potential in basketball, he preferred activities he could do alone. He spent hours working on car engines, learning aircraft maintenance, and playing the piano so intensely that his fingers would bleed from extended practice sessions. As for his graduation, the details are unclear. Some friends, like Fritz Maines, suspect that he might have dropped out to pursue other interests outside of school. Despite the rocky start and various challenges, Clint Eastwood's resilience and passion for film eventually led him to become one of Hollywood's most iconic figures. With his father moving to Seattle in early 1949, Clint Eastwood temporarily settled in Oakland at his friend Harry Pendleton's place. His life took a dramatic turn when he attended a party in Malibu and met the renowned film director Howard Hawks. This meeting was pivotal, but Clint's journey to Hollywood stardom was not immediate. Before stepping into the film industry, he took on various jobs, logging in Springfield, Oregon, working as a lifeguard after earning his Red Cross certification, and playing ragtime piano in an Oakland bar. Each job added a new layer to his evolving story. Clint's past seemed sprinkled with both raw talent and fortunate occurrences, raising questions about whether fate was orchestrating his rise. His life grew even more thrilling when he was drafted into the Army during the Korean War in 1951. Instead of combat, he was stationed at Fort Ord, California, where he was a swimming instructor, a seemingly secure position. However, fate had more in store for him. On September 30, 1951, while hitching a flight back to base from Seattle, Clint faced a terrifying ordeal. The flight encountered severe weather immediately, and then the aircraft's back door unexpectedly opened. Clint managed a makeshift repair, but soon the radio and oxygen systems failed. The situation worsened when the plane ran out of fuel amidst fog far from the California coast. The pilot was forced to ditch the plane into shark-infested waters. Clint and the pilot quickly inflated their rafts and paddled strenuously back to shore. The ocean was merciless, flipping Clint's raft and forcing him to swim possibly two to four miles. Here, his army training as a swimming instructor proved crucial, possibly saving his life. Fighting against hallucinations and exhaustion in the glowing bioluminescent waters, 
He miraculously reached shore, finding refuge in an RCA radio station where he and the pilot, who also survived, reunited. Years later, Clint starred in The Escape from Alcatraz, where he portrayed Frank Morris, an inmate who daringly escapes the notorious island prison by swimming across the frigid San Francisco Bay. This role seemed to mirror his real-life brush with death, lending authenticity to his on-screen escape. But Clint's military life wasn't all about survival. He also worked a side job at a sugar company to supplement his modest army pay of $67 a month. Plus, there was a rumored romantic involvement with an officer's daughter, hinting that good connections were always part of his narrative. During a visit to Carmel, Clint was captivated by the area, voicing a desire to one day reside there. Each of these experiences, from daunting challenges to serendipitous encounters woven together, formed the rugged tapestry of Clint Eastwood's early life, setting the stage for his legendary career in Hollywood. Clint Eastwood, over the decades, transitioned from a cowboy on dusty plains to a city-dwelling detective and beyond, reflecting a journey marked by dramatic roles and personal challenges. He formed strong bonds with military buddies like Richard Long and Martin Milner, who would also become stars on television. This network of friends played a critical role in his life, influencing his career and providing support through various phases. In the 1970s and early 1980s, Clint left behind his cowboy image to embody Dirty Harry, the iconic San Francisco cop known for his unorthodox methods and disregard for strict rules. This role became a defining part of his career, representing a lawman willing to cross lines for justice. His portrayal of morally ambiguous characters continued in movies like Thunderbolt and Lightfoot and The Gauntlet, where he blurred the lines between right and wrong. Clint also explored comedy, starring alongside an orangutan named Clyde in Every Which Way films, showcasing his versatility. This era concluded with his intense performance in Escape from Alcatraz, where he played a desperate convict, demonstrating his ability to diversify his roles convincingly. The mid-1970s brought a poignant moment during the filming of The Iger Sanction. Tragically, a stunt double, David Knoll, lost his life in a rock slide that mirrored a scene they had filmed just days earlier. This incident deeply affected Clint, bringing a somber reality to the risks involved in filmmaking. Despite his grief and initial desire to halt the project, he was persuaded by his crew to continue, honoring the memory of their fallen colleague. As the 1980s and 1990s unfolded, Clint's characters evolved to depict deeper, more complex men haunted by their pasts and personal demons. In Firefox, he played a pilot struggling with PTSD, and in Tightrope, he was a detective haunted by the criminal he was chasing. These roles demonstrated his character's internal struggles, making them relatable and compelling. The Rookie and White Hunter Black Heart continued this theme, with characters obsessed with their missions, often at great personal cost. Unforgiven in the early 1990s marked a principal in Clint's career, returning to his western roots but portraying a haunted ex-outlaw wrestling with his violent history. This film, rich in character depth, showcased a man confronting his past and the consequences of his actions, earning critical acclaim in several Academy Awards. Entering the 2000s, Clint's roles adapted to his aging, often portraying grumpy yet profoundly layered characters. In Space Cowboys, he was an aging astronaut given a final chance at space travel, blending adventure with introspection. Bloodwork featured him as a retired profiler drawn back into the hunt for a killer despite his health issues. Clint reached a peak in his archetype with Million Dollar Baby, where he played a reluctant boxing trainer facing his own regrets, in Gran Torino, where he portrayed a racist veteran who finds redemption in an unlikely friendship. His more recent work in Cry Macho portrays him as a weathered horseman on a reflective journey through rural Mexico, continuing his exploration of characters with rugged exteriors and complex emotional interiors. Each role, each film, has been a step in a journey marked not just by evolving acting skills, but also by an increasing ability to convey deep personal human experiences. Clint Eastwood's career, spanning over several decades, illustrates a tapestry of evolving characters, each reflecting a part of his own personal growth and response to life's innumerable challenges. Clint's personal life has been as complex and dramatic as the plots of the films he's directed. His first marriage to Maggie Johnson in 1953 marked what seemed like a desire for a stable home life. Although initially reluctant to marry, Eastwood committed to it, but the calm of domestic life didn't last long. He soon became restless and infidelity became a recurring issue. One of the early outcomes of his affairs was the birth of a daughter, Lori Murray, from a relationship that remained a secret even to Eastwood himself as Lori was placed for adoption without his knowledge. Years later, another affair resulted in the birth of his daughter, Kimberlyn. 
Despite Maggie knowing about these affairs, she stayed with Clint for years, during which they had two children of their own, Kyle and Allison. However, the strain of Clint's actions gradually eroded their marriage. By 1979, his involvement with actress Sandra Locke, whom he met on the set of the outlaw Josie Wales, brought his marriage with Maggie to an inevitable end. Clint's relationship with his children has been as varied and complicated as his romantic entanglements. Kimber Eastwood has shared mixed feelings about her relationship with her father, at times describing their bond as strong, while at other occasions expressing feelings of neglect and longing for a closer relationship. Lori Murray's story adds another dimension to Clint's complex personal life. Adopted as a baby, Lori only learned about her biological father in the 1990s through a private investigator. Clint welcomed her into his life after she reached out, but it remains unclear if he had ever known about her or sought her out before she discovered her lineage. Clint's long-standing affair with stuntwoman Roxanne Tunis, which began on the set of Rawhide, resulted in another daughter, Kimber. This relationship lasted about 14 years, and similar to previous instances, Eastwood was initially unaware that Kimber was his daughter. This pattern of secrecy and discovery seems to repeat itself across his relationships. Sandra Locke became another significant relationship in his life, beginning while he was still with Maggie Johnson and while Locke was in a platonic marriage with her childhood friend. Their relationship began as a passionate affair but grew increasingly troubled. Locke later claimed that Eastwood, contrary to his initial desires, pressured her into having two abortions and a sterilization procedure, leading to a toxic dynamic between them. This tumultuous relationship lasted a decade and ended with Locke suing Eastwood for fraud and breach of promises, leading to a highly publicized and messy legal battle. Each of these relationships and familial connections paints a picture of a man who, despite his professional success and public persona, navigated a private life filled with complex relationships and personal challenges. While Sandra Locke was still a significant part of his life, Clint Eastwood encountered Jacelyn Reeves, a flight attendant. Their brief relationship led to the birth of two children, Scott and Catherine. Around the same period, he met actress Frances Fisher. It was love at first sight for Fisher, and despite the ongoing presence of Locke in his life, Eastwood and Fisher embarked on a relationship that resulted in the birth of their daughter, Francesca. However, Eastwood's hidden children with Reeves and the continual strain from his past relationships began to show. Paparazzi photos and rumors of infidelity surfaced, leading to the eventual breakdown of his relationship with Fisher. In 1992, Eastwood met news anchor Dina Ruiz. Their relationship quickly evolved into a whirlwind romance, culminating in a marriage in 1996. The couple welcomed a daughter, Morgan, shortly thereafter. This period appeared to be a more stable phase in Eastwood's tumultuous personal life. However, when Ruiz participated in a reality show, it clashed with Eastwood's preference for privacy. Tensions escalated as Ruiz sought comfort from her old friend Scott Fisher, while Eastwood reconnected with his former wife Erica Tomlinson Fisher. By 2013, Eastwood's marriage to Ruiz had officially ended. However, life goes on and in 2015, Eastwood began a relationship with hostess Christina Sandera. They have maintained a low-profile relationship, often seen at events with Eastwood's exes and children, displaying a mature and amicable demeanor that contrasts with his early tumultuous relationships. In recent years, Eastwood's health became a topic of concern after he was absent from the public eye for over 450 days. His last known public appearance had been in February 2022 at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, an event he usually relishes and that is held near his home. His absence from the 2023 tournament where his son Scott competed heightened concerns about his well-being. However, Eastwood squashed these rumors with a public appearance at a conservation event hosted by Jane Goodall in his hometown of Carmel-by-the-Sea. At this event, the 93-year-old legend was seen in good spirits, chatting with Goodall and others. Photos from the event showed him looking healthy, sporting longer hair, a full beard, and dressed casually yet stylishly. Eastwood's return to the public eye was marked by his active participation in filmmaking. He was seen directing and producing Juror No. 2, a courtroom drama on a set in Georgia. Engaged and focused, Eastwood's presence on set showed his continued passion for filmmaking. Additionally, Eastwood follows a strict diet focusing on low-fat and high-protein intake, being mindful of his cholesterol levels, a practice likely influenced by his father's early death from cardiovascular disease. This disciplined approach to health is something he has passed on to his children, particularly his son Scott Eastwood, who views his father as a fitness inspiration. Scott shared that Clint introduced him to weightlifting as a teenager and follows a similarly strict diet focused on nutrients rather than indulgences. 
Eastwood is grappling with a profound grief following the death of his longtime partner, Christina Sandera, who passed away at the age of 61. The news of her death was confirmed by Eastwood on July 19th of 2024. In his heartfelt statement, he describes Sandera as a lovely, caring woman whose absence will leave a significant void in his life. While the details surrounding her death remain undisclosed, the impact of her passing is palpable. Eastwood and Sandera's relationship began in 2014, having first crossed paths at the Mission Ranch Hotel and Restaurant, a property owned by Eastwood located in Carmel-by-the-Sea, California. Their relationship, which unfolded away from the glaring spotlight typically cast on Hollywood relationships, was one marked by a shared preference for privacy. Despite this, they made their public debut as a couple at the Oscars in 2015, where Eastwood's film American Sniper was in contention for six awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor for Bradley Cooper. Sandera, unlike Eastwood, was not a fixture in the entertainment industry, which contributed to their low-profile relationship dynamic. They resided together in the coastal community of Carmel, where Eastwood once held the position of mayor during the 1980s. Throughout their time together, Sandera was a constant presence at various significant events, including the premieres of Eastwood's subsequent films like Sully, The Mule, The 1517 to Paris, and Richard Jewell. Just weeks before Sandera's untimely death, Eastwood celebrated his 94th birthday, an occasion that his family marked with subdued celebrations respecting his well-known indifference to birthday festivities. In a conversation with Mario Lopez from Access Hollywood, Scott Eastwood shared that the family planned a quiet, intimate lunch and despite his father's reluctance, a surprise birthday cake to honor the milestone. This low-key celebration highlighted Eastwood's preference for simplicity and his continuous passion for his work, even as he neared the century mark. The loss of Christina Sandera is not just a personal tragedy for Clint Eastwood, but also marks the end of an era of companionship that was cherished deeply by both. As the details of her death remain private, the focus shifts to the enduring legacy of their time together, underscored by mutual respect and a profound connection that extended beyond the dazzle of Hollywood.